Next commemoration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. yesterday, but NBA players' history with Dr. King, it goes well beyond using games to highlight his work. Bill Russell was at the March on Washington, where Dr. King delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. And Russell and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, they joined Dr. King in supporting Muhammad Ali's protest of the Vietnam War. And I had the privilege of interviewing Dr. King's daughter, Dr. Bernice A. King, about her father, his legacy, and the NBA's impact. What's it like for you, from your perspective, to see the NBA's role on this day every single year? Well, it's exciting um, to know that it has become a staple. It has become uh, important uh, to the NBA to do that. Um, you know, when my mother started this effort uh, with the holiday and going back to um, Congress to say, hey, we want to create a federal holiday commission because we want to make sure that as people remember this day, it doesn't get dismissed and lost. Mm -hmm. What has happened through time because of the foundation she laid, you know, it is increasing in importance. And to see uh, the league, the NBA say, hey, we're not going to just play ball on this day, but we're going to take some time and, and focus on the work of this important um, individual who helped to lead not only our nation and our world toward more equity and more humanity and more peace and more justice. It helps me to know that the work that I'm doing is not in vain. And also the fact that a lot of fans that perhaps are at the game who may not have even thought it important to recognize Dr. King's day mm. has to have a little snippet of it <laughs> as a result. So we've got to make sure it's in every arena for those that still may not understand and appreciate why we celebrate this important day. Right. And so that message continues to permeate. In 2020, yes, it does. you were influential in encouraging Atlanta business leaders to actively support racial equality, social justice, uh, and you were successful in the passage of Georgia's hate crime legislation. And the NBA and the WNBA in particular, they, they have been, they haven't been shy at all about being on the forefront mm -hmm. of these issues. What message would you want to pass along to those players? You know, I would say continue the, the effort, continue the advocacy. There's so many other things that we need to get done. Voting rights, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the restoration of, of voting rights, the protections of those voting rights, we still need to get done. We need to still get legislation um, done around police uh, brutality. Um, we still need to get legislation done about um, um, livable wages. This is, you know, you know, healthcare. We have it, but it still needs to be improved. We need to deal with immigration uh, in the immigration policies in this nation. And so, I think it's important that uh, these players don't rest in some of the victories that may have been achieved by their efforts, but that they continue the momentum. Because as my mother said, struggle is a never-ending process. Freedom is never really won. You earn it and win it in every generation. And we have to be zealous in every generation to make sure we do that. Because as my father said, one of the tragedies still of human history is that the children of darkness are often more zealous and determined than the children of light. Mm. And because the NBA has decided to be a part of the light, I'm saying let it shine, let it shine, and don't stop letting it shine. The NBA choosing to be a part of the light, because that's the only way that we can move forward, is if there is more light, if that is more pervasive, if that shines brighter, if love loves harder than those who want to purport hate and put hate out into this world. On this show, Dr. King, we have played clips and replayed clips of the speeches that your father gave to educate our younger audience, to remind our older audience. Is there anything, any speech, any message that you hear now that still resonates deeply with you the way that it did maybe when you were a child? You know, I find myself listening over and over again to different speeches, but the one thread uh, for me uh, that always shows up whenever I'm speaking and presenting or conversing is this whole notion of our interrelatedness and our interconnectedness, because I think that's where we fall short. You know, we oftentimes fight for things that are near and dear to us, you know, in our own circles, but we don't think about the fact that there's a broader world, a broader, you know, community, a, a humanity, so to speak. And so he said, we're caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny and what affects one directly affects all indirectly, and I cannot be all that I ought to be until you are all that you ought to be, and you cannot be all that you ought to be till I'm all that I ought to be. 
So this whole message of our interconnected humanity is so important. And we have to keep that at the forefront, you know, so that we do continue to stand up, uh, but we stand up for what's right for humanity. And, you know, the best way I know how to describe it in our campaign, we've been telling people to be loved, be loved, you know, and bring about um, justice and equity and peace uh, for all of humanity across the world. Mm. And I, I have to believe that sports has such a role that it can play in that interconnectivity, in that love, if the leagues and the players so choose to continue to push that message, especially the way that we've seen the last couple of years. Dr. King, thank you so much for spending some time with us here on NBA Today. Thank you for having me again. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.